Everybody, welcome to Creative Bug. We're coming at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. A little bit later today, sorry for the technical difficulties, but you'll see I have a special guest in the house, Lisa Solomon. She is a longtime Creative Bug instructor, local Bay art artist, author, installation artist, educator. What don't you do, Lisa? Uh, stand on my head. No, I don't know. I can't do a cartwheel. A little known fact about me. I can still do cartwheels, I think. It's yeah. been a long time. I don't know. I might hurt myself. Let's not try that. I don't think our mics would allow us to anyway. No! Or the fact that we're wearing dresses. Yeah, that would not be good. Okay, never mind. No cartwheels. <laughs> because we're live, it means you can write in and ask us questions like always. So if you have any questions for Lisa about some of her existing classes, she's done some fantastic classes on acrylic mediums and painting. Also, a 30-day challenge on drawing shadows. That's right. But what are you filming with us this week? Um, more acrylic stuff. We're doing like advanced techniques. There's so many acrylic mediums out there, so we're trying to do sort of like a dive in, try some new things out, um, get that going, and then hopefully we'll also do the shashiko class. Which is really cool. It's like a, sl can you describe kind of what that is for people who maybe have not been familiar with the term or yeah. didn't know how to say it? <laughs> so it's a traditional Japanese embroidery technique. Uh, shashiko actually means little stabs, so it's where you run your needle through the fabric continuously. It's also used a lot in a bottle or mending technique so we'll be doing kind of both of those. I'll show you how to do your own shashiko and then we'll show how to make uh, mend something jeans or anything else. I feel like I've been seeing that a lot with like the slow fashion movement it's both a repair technique but also it's um, a decorative way to adorn Yes, and the great thing is it goes a lot faster than regular embroidery, so oh. I feel like some of the stitches in embroidery can be really hard to learn or they take a really long time. This is a single running stitch. You can actually complete kind of a small square in an evening, so it's really satisfying because it's that. not like, oh, I'm going to work on this for seven years before I finish it. So it feels faster. like satisfying. Totally. Awesome. Totally. I love that. And um, so you're doing the acrylic medium class, you're doing the sashiko class, of course we've got your other classes. And then today I'm making her do something totally different <laughs> and not our usual because it's so close to Halloween, which is one of my favorite holidays. I basically love anything spooky. Yes. Did you guys see the October promo? It's good. She's really good. We just had Lisa watch it and I could hear everyone downstairs laughing. Um, it features Erica, who's in our office and she is our great leading actress. Yes. I'm supporting role. Charlie is another supporting role. Oh yeah, Charlie is in there. And I think Ali will post a link to it if you haven't seen it. It's pretty funny. It's, it's our really funny. spooky take on um, the, huh. yeah, and the promo for what we're doing this month. So this is another kind of activity that kind of coincides with Halloween. It's a little bit spooky. It's actually a Victorian technique. Mm. And um, I have this customer at my shop. Her name's Mary. And she came in and showed me that she was so excited about it. It's kind of like, like when you saw it, what did you think? Rorschach? Yeah, so it's kind of like this ink blot test. The idea is that you're getting your friends to sign a piece of paper. You fold that piece of paper in half and you wind up with what is their ghost shadow. Um, and so this is the original book that it came from. It's called The Ghosts of My Friends. This book is from 1909. I'm afraid to touch it. I know. It's, it's pretty delicate, actually. It's so beautiful. So it says the directions. Sign your name along the fold of the paper with a full pen of ink. Now, mind you, they were using dip pens or yes. different kinds or of pens. Quills, right? Like yeah. feathers, probably? So we're going to do that. But we're going to show you some contemporary updates for this technique. And then double the page over without using blotting paper, which yeah. I challenge you to find blotting paper because it's actually very difficult to find. Um, and this kind of gives you an idea. Oh. And this is what it actually looks oh, like. So, pretty. so this was done on June 4th, 1909. Um, this is Sonia, Cha Sonia Chapter? Number Sonia chapter number 199 DES. Yeah. So this is um, her signature. And there's uh -huh. another one. This is Albert Reed. So the idea is in your drawing room, I suppose. You'd have your friend sign this like a. Oh, yes. Mm. Right, I know. Tea we're, with the pinky <laughs> I don't know if we're appropriately dressed for this no, activity. We're not appropriately dressed. And we're definitely. Dressed. We don't have enough cake. No. Or tea. Or tea. 
Um, but I think at the time, right, the Victorian scrapbook album was very popular and signature okay. albums yes. were very popular. So this was like the spooky version. There was all the memento stuff, right? Like aren't there the hair locket? Yes. Yeah, like yeah, 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 totally. So I'll show you a little bit more of this, but we're actually going to try it. Okay. So we've got a couple of things. I've got a Muji notebook here and you have you, a moleskin. You gave me a moleskin. The idea is that you want to do a text weight paper and something that's not too absorbent. So not your watercolor paper, not a card stock. Uh, this is a really smooth surface. Right. And we're going to start using the dip pen. So okay. that's your traditional traditional nib pen. If you've seen my mono printing Warhol mono printing class, um, this is what we use. And Lisa's got I one that you. I picked up in New York actually, yeah. at an antique shop. And we're using acrylic ink, okay. or you can use watercolor ink, or you could use sumi ink. So okay. just pick a pick one that you like. Okay, my best. And the idea is you need something that's nice and juicy to make this work. And really, just because we're doing this live, we're going to sign our own names, but you're supposed to pass it around and let your friends do it. Okay, I feel like I need a refresher in cursive. So you, you have to go kind of quick, and you want to sign on the line, and then I've pre-folded the pages so that they're easier to fold in half. Did it work? Did it work? And then you open it up, and you wind up with these really amazing and totally abstract images like a Rorschach. It does. It looks kind of like a skeleton. Yeah, or it's supposed to be your ghost, like your shadow ghost. Right. Um, I think they all look like bugs. Bugs. But I really, I really like the way they look. All right, let's try it again. Okay, I'm gonna need another piece of paper. Okay. I've pre-folded. I'm just working in my Muji notebook. Okay. I'm gonna dip into the acrylic ink. I'm gonna get more ink. I want it to be really juicy. Yes. Oh, and you, you want to try something. Now, it's supposed to be your signature, but you were saying you, you want to do a phrase, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I hear you. So I'm doing too. Ooh, can you hear that scratch? I think Mabel would be proud. <gasps> Faster. Okay. So I wrote Happy Halloween. What did you write? I love you to the end of the earth. <gasps> I love that. That's not very spooky. <gasps> oh my god, look how cool Ooh, it is. Ooh, that's beautiful. I should have written something really like, I want to <gasps> suck your blood. I want to suck your blood. Because everybody needed to know that says that. Yeah. This is awesome. That turned out nice. I mean, this would be such a cool texture to paint on top of because we're using the acrylic ink. You could watercolor paint on top of this. Yeah. Oh my god, it's awesome. So, I like, yours so I like this too. Okay, you wrote skinnier. I want to try writing skinnier. All right. What if you don't do cursive? What if you just do block letters? Try block letters. I'm going to try using a glaze. Um, this is a Sakura of America glaze pen, okay. jelly roll pen. The idea is you need something really juicy. That's why the nib pens work so well. But I talked to Michaela from Sakura, and she said, try the glaze. So that's what we're going to do. OK. I'm going to try to just do my, I'm going to do Happy Halloween again. OK, I'll do Happy Halloween, too, but blocks. OK. Oh, I need more ink. I think I need to go slower with the glaze, though, because it needs to be juicier. Let's see how it works. I didn't do block letters. I lied. Okay. Oh, that's still pretty juicy. Did that work? Ooh. Ooh mine was so wet. Okay, oh, so now no. I'm going to try. Let me try slower. This is not necessarily a super intuitive first round. It's just like when I did the um, Warhol mono prints, it looks easy, but it's you need to do it a couple of times. You definitely need to do it a couple of times. Ooh, that one worked better. Ooh. So this one did not work, but that one looks cool. That one looks really so, good. So whereas before I was doing a faster writing, this one I okay, did slower. Oh my god, yeah, that looks awesome. I love that. I know, it doesn't look like any recognizable writing. But it's a cool shape. But it looks cool. OK, I want to try something else. OK. OK, that was the glaze pen that you were doing? And actually, I think I have, swap? Well, I think I have the wrong tip on here. Do you want uh, to try black? OK. Uh, I was like, uh, why is it not blue? OK. All right. Um, favorite Halloween phrase? I'm just going to write beloved. I feel like that's appropriate Victorian and spooky. Victor no, I it's also one of my, my favorite books from Toni Morrison. I'm going a little slower with the glaze so that more ink can come out. Oh, does that help? Okay. It see. does. Okay, okay. Just for the glaze pen. Ghosts. Goblins. Oh, that one worked. That one's like a shadow, can like a I true sell shadow. Ghouls? Okay, we have our first question. Yeah. Marsha wants to know what pens are you using? Hi, Marsha. Welcome. The question was what pens are we using? And currently, we're using the Sakura Glaze Jelly Roll <gasps> Pen. 
That's really cool. Oh my god, it looks like three of the same almost. Almost, and you can actually read it still. That's really awesome. Okay, I like that. And we're doing this like ghost signature, which is a Victorian game of autographs from your friends, but we thought it was nice and spooky and a fun thing you could do coming up to Halloween. Couldn't you draw pictures too? Try it, try it, yeah. I wanted to try um, a gold pen on a dark piece of paper. Gold pen on it, okay. The only thing is, is you gotta go kind of fast. Yeah. Because you don't want the ink to dry. Dry. Mm -hmm. It's okay. true. Next question. Jerry wants to know are you putting the words right above the fold or on the fold? Kind of both. Both. We experimented writing. The question was where are we putting the words on this line? I was doing it on top of the line and folding. Oh, that looks awesome. And then sometimes you just go over both sides of the line. I think the idea is that you're actually supposed to draw right on the line so that this side is blank when you fold it over. But you can do both. Just kind of like depends on the look. I feel like both makes some really cool lines. Yeah. So I'm trying a pen touch pen. This is an oil-based pen. It's pretty juicy. Like I said a million times already, it needs to be a juicy pen for this to work. So, oh my god, that's really fun too. I love this. The ghost. These look like little moths. Can I do jack-o'-lanterns? Yeah. I don't know. Can I draw the best of them? All right, next question. Darlene is asking, where did you get the paper and what kind is it? Hi Darlene, Darlene's asking what kind of paper. Right now I'm working on a text weight paper from Paper Source. Uh, you don't want to use a cardstock or watercolor paper, anything too textured or too heavy. That one didn't work so well, it needs to be juicier. Mm. But uh, Lisa has a moleskin page torn out of a journal and I was using a Muji notebook earlier. So the mm. idea is something not too absorbent. You want the ink to sit on the surface as best you can. Did you try it on any like Ooh. vellum? Does that I work? haven't, we don't have any vellum here. Mm. I should try it. Andrew, can I do vampire teeth? What do vampire teeth look like? Yeah. Mm, I don't know, the metallic pen isn't working as well. It might need to be a little juicier. Try it know, here. This doesn't really look like vampire teeth, but whatever. They look like, those look like little animals. I can't draw vampire teeth on the fly. Well, I think you need a mouth, is that why? Uh, no, I think they need to know what vampire <laughs> teeth look like. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, this one didn't work okay, so well. Okay, I'm liking the drawing things instead of writing words. All right, drawing things. If anybody has any suggested spooky yeah, phrases. what should I draw? Oh, do little, I'm gonna do little skeletons, like skulls. I'll do it too. Okay, okay. okay ready? Okay. This looks like a mushroom. Yeah, I'm so like wanting to make sure that there's enough ink that I know. It's not making for the neatest <laughs> Oh, that one is better. God, they really do look like mushrooms. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Mushrooms with teeth. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Oh, I think I did a lot of ink. Ooh. Oh, because the pen scratched into the surface of the paper, you can still see the drawing. I like that. Yeah, it's fun. Let me try this color. Oh, yeah, see, mine totally blurred. Okay, can I have them talk? Okay. So we're still doing little skulls and writing above the line. They're a little messy because we're rushing just because we don't think to dry. Oh, that's fun. God, that looks like a crazy Victorian silhouette in a speech bubble. And these look, oh my gosh, I love this so much. Okay. It's like, this looks like two women kissing with like yeah. braids in their hair and you just need to draw little legs on them. Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay, yeah, I'll draw That's so good. And it's like they have little bustles. Can I draw a bow? Yeah. Uh, no, it's so cute. Lisa Blair says, maybe make the letters different sizes to give more depth. We oh. could do that. Lisa Blair, just okay. spookily like Linda Blair from The Exorcist. <laughs> My head's going to start to <laughs> Said to try varying our letter okay, size. Okay, okay. I'll get I like this. Paper. These look like little <gasps> moths. Oh, I like that. It's really fun. Okay, varying letter size coming up. <gasps> Wait, mine looks like bunny rabbits kissing with caterpillar bodies. Is that a thing? It is now. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I see rabbits, I think of Mike pooping it rabbit. It just became a thing. Okay, varying letter sizes. Okay, let's go. Oh, wait, I need more ink. So this is a rabbit. This is his cotton tail. This was our tester sheet. It really does look like bunnies. Ooh, ooh, I poked through the paper. 
That's really fun too to use things. Ooh. That does work. Thank you. Who is that that said that? Linda Blair. Me. Lisa Blair. Well, okay. Lisa Blair Myers. Okay. Lisa Blair Myers. Lisa Blair Myers, that was genius. Mike Myers. <gasps> yeah, exactly. You have two Michael spooky Myers. name yeah. references, Lisa. Thank you for writing in. You don't even have to dress in. up for Halloween. No. It's so not fair. You could just wear a sign this that is has your cool. name on it. This is, this is fun. I like that these are now starting to be the beginning of drawings. This would be really good for a social sketch. Okay, Lisa. <gasps> Blair Myers. This is so crazy looking. Emmy Y? Emmy yeah. Y E R S? Yep. I'm guessing. All right, what else are we going to draw? I'll do some little pumpkins. I like the pumpkins. Oh. <gasps> Her name's even spookier. It is. When written in ghost shadow. These also look like Pac-Man. Let's do it like that. Ooh, Pac-Man. Oh, yeah, we could do like... Uh, this is my pumpkin Pac-Man ghost? Mine kind of looks like Pac-Man ghost. All right, our next question comes from Phil. That's fun. And he's Hi, wondering, can you layer different colors of ink on top of each other? OK, let's try that. Yeah, Phil is asking, can we layer different colors of ink? I would say definitely in the acrylic, because this because you're laying down this bead of ink and then you're blotting it to make a mono print, this is basically immediately dry. And because it's ac acrylic ink, you can layer anything on top of it and it's not gonna interfere. These are watercolor, these two guys here, but I can do watercolor on top of acrylic ink, so. Okay, I'll do acrylic ink first and then I'll try and clean off the nib. Okay, use your baby wipe probably. Yes. Um, if you actually want to know how to use a dip pen, you can watch Maybell Imasa Stuckel's calligraphy classes. Yeah, because she's the pro. Because she actually uh, uses she, it for calligraphy. Her, her things would be uh, beautifully written instead of the way that we're doing it. Doing but it. this is fun because I actually use a nib pen for drawing all the time, so that's how I like to use it. Yeah. So it's fine. All right. I'm going to write Lisa Solomon. I shouldn't be signing your name, I guess. Is that bad? I'm going to go for it. Oh. Ooh. That's cool. Okay, Phil gets a gold star. That was yeah. also a genius idea. Thank you very much. Yeah, double layer. Yeah. And okay. I, I, I'm assuming it's Phil from the UK. Welcome. It is. Nice, nice to have you on our live shoot, writing in. Okay. Next question, we love your enthusiasm. Next question comes from Molly, and she is asking, what did you write or draw to make the outcome look like the Victorian silhouettes? What did you write? Do you remember? I think you were drawing. Skulls? The question, the question, I was drawing skulls. Yeah, the question is, what did you write or draw to make it look like these Victorian silhouettes? And she was doing skulls. I was doing skulls, and then the little speech bubble, I was writing boo. It's so awesome. I feel like these would be great starters for paintings or sketches, or you could wallpaper a whole wall. Ooh, that's really pretty. It reminds me, it feels a lot like um, blind contour, like totally relaxing yeah. and freeing, and like you don't care Random about the outcome. results. So you don't have like, to be. Oh, I'm not stressed out. Yeah. And we're using incredible amounts of paper. <laughs> I love this, though. You could totally wallpaper an entire thing. Like an entire oh, room with this. For Halloween. Yeah. Your Halloween decor. Yeah, totally. You Make just put it up with artist tape. All your guests sign their name, fold it over, paste it on the wall. And actually, I, I wish I had this book with me, but when Mary came into the shop and showed me this technique, we had this little book of paper that was kind of onion skin-like. And I had every customer that day sign their name. And so I have this little book of all these customers that came in. This is pretty fun. All right, what am I going to write here? I'm going to write my mom's name. She loves Halloween. I'm going to write Barbara loves Halloween. She does. Johnny plus Chachi. Yep, exactly. Uh, okay, let's take spooky. Spooky. All right, next question. Okay, well, first I have to say, Lisa Blair Myers writes back and says, yes, I do. I have a son born on Halloween. <gasps> Lisa Blair Myers, what? <laughs> Your son is born on Halloween? Shut up. That's amazing, and I'm a little bit envious because I have a May birthday, and it's not that exciting. I don't know. That can't be true. You're making that up. <laughs> That's incredible. That's not fair. It's All too right. much cool, too much spooky cool. But yeah. next question does come from Isabellis, who wants to know, what is the name of the Victorian book you showed? 
Isabellis is asking, what is the name of the book that this came from? So it's called The Ghosts of My Friends. We're probably done writing as much as we can. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I should try the skulls again, though, and see Go ahead. if they yeah. even come close to looking like Victorian ladies. So while uh, Lisa is playing with that, I'll also show you this book. So it's called The Ghosts of My Friends. This book was put out in the early 1900s. This copy has to uh, happens to have been filled in by around 1909 because the people who signed it actually dated it. Um, so the last, where we left off, was Albert Reed. Uh, and they didn't have like pH neutral paper then, that wasn't a thing. Uh, so all of this is pretty brittle and fragile, especially because it was folded on the line. So some of these oh, are God, very one's... delicate. This is Ida M. Reed, wife or sister, we'll never know. No idea. Um, Edward Reed, but look at that. It's like the medical symbol, that's what it reminds me of. So, that looks like a little crab, that looks like a crab, that looks yeah, like wings. Yeah, totally, like a pelvic bone. Rib cage. So this is Rhoda Hosler. I feel like we've lost the art of handwriting. We have, it's true. But look how different her writing is. She's like really chunky writing. Yeah, but look how awesome that is. I know the little flare in there. And there's also, can I just say, there are no mistakes. Like I was using a nib pen earlier and it kind of flung ink all over. And when I was having customers do this at the shop, there were like dots of ink. But when you fold it, it makes these really, really cool things. Yeah. Like Lisa's little boo. Let's try that again. This does not at all look like Victorian lady. <gasps> look at that one. Looks like <gasps> fire. JJ Hostler. That's like a leaf. It's really cool. That's beautiful. This is Aunt Etta. <laughs> also, if you need some baby name suggestions from 1909, Etta. Oh, that's really awesome. <laughs> this is Isaac Childs. Hmm. I love it. Joe Davidson. But you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, but like the paper actually is worn away from the folding and probably the caustic nature of this ink. Minnie Russell. Hi, Minnie. Aww. If you want to get out your Ouija board, you could also write these names down so you can talk to these people. Is it J? J A E? I think so. E? J E? I don't know. Oh, I don't know what that says. I love this. Looks like little feet. Totally. Oh, that's awesome. Gladys great. Davidson. There's like a lot of family. I feel like you should do your entire name. Full, middle. Oh, yeah. First, middle, last, junior. Yeah. Senior. This one we don't know. Helen. Oh, Helen Reed. I can tell from the thing. There are lots of Reeds in this. <laughs> it's like all fan. It's a family. Yeah. Someone else Reed. Helen tried it again. She didn't like it. This is 1910. All right. No, it's later. Hen Henrietta. So that's it. That's it. Anyway, I encourage you to try the ghost signatures to up the spook factor. Uh, Lisa is here filming more classes, which will be coming out in the new year. Really excited about that. Yeah. I think that's when they're coming out. We should I, ask Leanna. I don't know when they're coming. She knows specifically. Nobody told me anything. I just but if you haven't more. seen Lisa's existing classes, you can check them out on Creative Bug. If you want to check out more about how to use a nib pen for drawing, you can check out the Warhol inspired monoprints, which was a live shoot that we did back in our old studio. Yay. And thanks for tuning in live. We loved all your questions and comments. Lisa Blair Myers, you have the best name. Totally.